Hey guys, it's your boy Kitty Cats MD coming at you live from my first YouTube video. Something that I wanted to start off this channel with is a really important question that I'm asked a lot and something that I have a lot of personal experience with, and that's if you should go to a Caribbean med school. Now in order to understand the risks and benefits of going to a Caribbean medical school, there are three numbers by the end of this video that I want you to truly understand, and that's the match rate for US MDs, DOs, and US IMGs, or international medical graduates, which include Caribbean medical grads. In 2018, the match rate for US allopathic or MD students was 94%. The match rate for US osteopathic grads or DOs was 82%. The match rate for US IMGs including those Caribbean medical graduates, 57%. I can't stress this enough. This is the crux of the argument of should you or should you not go to a Caribbean medical school. If you don't get a residency position and complete that residency training in your respective field, you cannot be a practicing doctor in the US. So if you graduate med school, sure, you're gonna get two letters at the end of your name, whether it be MD or DO, but without training in a residency program, you're never gonna practice as a doctor in the United States. And not being able to practice medicine, not only is that crushing to your soul to work so hard to get into med school, to complete medical school, and then not be able to become a doctor, but now you also have six figures worth of debt and no job to pay it off. Now don't get me wrong, I went to a Caribbean med school. I graduated from Ross University, matched into an internal medicine program in a large university, and I'm starting a fellowship in cardiology in July. I'm a success story if there is one, but I'm not every story. There are plenty of people out there who don't match and end up not being able to practice as a physician. On top of that, a lot of medical schools in the Caribbean have lower standards of acceptance. Thus, there are a lot of people that start medical school and end up not being able to finish it. And they're ended up burdened with that extra debt. Now, I truly enjoyed myself in the Caribbean. I was stressed out before a test, took a walk on the beach, calmed down, crushed that test. But it really takes a lot of self-motivation because you have to make sure that you're on top of things. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, why did I go to a Caribbean med school? And the honest answer is, that's the only school that I got accepted into. If you're ever accepted into a USMD or DO program, go to them. Caribbean med schools should not be plan A. They should be plan B or plan C. Apply to USMD or DO programs. If you don't get in, try to work on your weaknesses. Improve your MCAT score. Work on that research. Get a post back. Whatever it is that you have to do. Especially if you want to go into an ultra competitive specialty. But I caution that if you think in the back of your mind, in your heart of hearts, that you know that you want to be an orthopedic surgeon, you want to go into urology, you want to become a plastic surgeon, a Caribbean med school is only going to impede your ability to do so. It's not impossible, and I'm willing to bet there are tons of them out there. But going to a Caribbean med school puts you at a distinct and objective disadvantage compared to USMD and DOs. So why is that? Why are Caribbean grads not matching at the same rate as USMDs and DOs? Part of the reason can be seen in the NRMP or National Resident Match Program data. In a survey sent out to residency program directors, it was revealed that some residency programs just don't look at you if you're from the Caribbean. So part of that discontinuity between the match rates of USMD and DOs and Caribbeans is partly from the fact that we just don't have as many residency programs that are gonna accept us and look at us. So let's say you go to a Caribbean med school. What are the things that you can do to improve your chances of matching? Crush the USMLEs, get great letters of recommendation, get a good resume, do some extracurriculars, do some research, and then lastly, interview well. A common myth is that crushing the USMLEs will guarantee you interviews. But the truth is, a lot of programs use USMLE scores to weed people out. So they simply won't look at people who have a score below 205. So a good step score doesn't really open any doors, but it keeps them from shutting on you. And as a Caribbean, you need to keep as many doors open as possible. Now, I never want to discourage anyone from going to a Caribbean med school. I did. They gave me the only opportunity that I had to pursue my dream of becoming a doctor, and I'm living it. But if you're going to be applying to a Caribbean med school or going to a Caribbean med school, you need to have informed consent of that decision that you're about to make and all the implications down the road. So I hope this video helped you guys understand the simple question of should you go to a Caribbean med school? I encourage everyone to look at the NRMP data themselves so they can understand it a little bit better. If you guys have any specific questions, follow up questions, and wanna reach out to me, I'm on Insta, Twitter, and you can always comment down below. Additionally, you can check out my blog for a little bit more of the intricate details that I didn't get into on this video. 